Good morning, evening, or afternoon, everybody. It's Kago coming at you with another video. So today, I wanted to take the time to tell you all these awesome new changes that they just went live late last night. Um, these are just general quality of life changes, class changes, and just stuff that makes Phase 4 honestly better, in my opinion. And a few of them we even made videos about, which it's really awesome to sort of see those be implemented. I know Agrand uh, D, uh, replied to one of the videos and said that it will be here Monday, so we got a little bit of a sneak peek, but all in all, still really awesome to see that. But before we get into the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Everything you guys do helps my channel grow, helps me get discovered, and helps me help as many people as possible, which is the entire point of my channel. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So I'm going to switch it over here to the forum's blue post that we see, and it says... Devil Sword Gauntlets are no longer require core leather. They require Devil Sword Leather, 12 Devil Sword Leather, and 8 Essence of Fire in addition to other existing mats. Devil Sword Leggings should now require 20 Devil Sword Leather and 10 Essence essence of fire in addition to their other mats made some improvements to the respawn rate of mobs on alcaz island this is huge i noticed i didn't have this problem because i would race card that quest line for the 0.5 to get the video out to you guys but i noticed a lot of my guildies and a lot of people this past weekend that island was crowded people were just kind of camping afk on spawn so having that be quicker and the basket spawning is a phenomenal change the chipped Drake Fire Amulet and the Valor of Azeroth Spellbook are now available from Squire Row and Etrig in Orgrimmar. Um, for players who have completed the Oni Quest Chain, we made a video about that, talking about the BOA Oni Neck and the Valor of Azeroth's book for Warriors. Really awesome that they did that. Gift of Gob will no longer cancel stealth. So apparently if you turned your friend into a goblin from the Undermine Real uh, Trinket, that... Um, caused stealth to be cancelled so you could grief your own faction people I suppose um made some improvements to Bolvar Four Dragons respawn time so this is huge so people can do the Four Dragon quest line to get their some of their Prebis items Azor Lone Tree's wares are available while completing rune discoveries I'm not entirely sure what that means but it is a vendor that it sells the spell books so I'm not exactly sure what that entails um, corrected the stats on the old guard reflector dark moon card sandstorm will no longer <laughs> line of sight so if you were an enjoyer of Skolomance speed running you can no longer do that because sandstorm will not pull the bottom or top uh, depending which cubby you are in but if you are not a speed runner it won't wipe your group hopefully so you know that's good then quests from Zalgo the Explorer no longer egregiously give Zandalari tribe reputation. They give reputation for Emerald Wardens up to friendly, um, 5.99 out of 6,000. And these quests will always reward the same amount of reputation based on level. So Zalgo the Explorer is the guy on the Zandalari island that you give your uh, sunken temple things to. I was actually just buying a bunch and turning it in to try to get my Xandalar rep up, but they definitely lowered it already, so that kind of sucks if you were trying to do that, but definitely should be in the game because we don't want to see people just already have Bloodvine from turning in previous reputations. Sort of having that gated a little bit is pretty good to see. Next, this one is huge. This is one of the most recent videos we made and the one that Agrin commented on that I referred to in the intro, but all runes sold by the Emerald Warden Quartermasters no longer require reputation to purchase. Catnip and Wolf's Head Trophy no longer require Emerald Reputation to purchase as well. So these are huge items that are game-changing. And so if you were someone who did not play Phase 3 and you came back for Phase 4, um, if you didn't do incursions at 40 in Ashenvale or 50 for Hinterlands and Feralis, you were kind of just SOL. There was really nothing you could do without spending thousands of gold to get your rep up from the gathering quests that are at the that are available at level 60 as well as we now also have the alternate way from zalgo the explorer so both of these things are great rep changes that don't create some weird artificial player gatekeep that we've sort of done because of having to have gathering professions and going into the incursions for your main that might be leather working and engineering or something like that so just a, all in all really good by the devs to hear our feedback here the people struggle and get after it one of the biggest criticisms i saw was 
with that video is people were like, oh, well, that sucks. They didn't play phase three. That's not the person that really is targeted. It's targeted because there is no way for that person to farm them. If they could go and do those daily quests at 60 and earn that reputation, that'd be great. But I don't think there's a way to have that in the game without yielding it gold and stuff, just how the game is coded. So that is kind of a problem, and people really hated incursions that much in phase three and the incursion loops that it was probably the most negative thing I've ever covered in the classic WoW project. So that is where that comes from. And then the last tablets of Morashu should be completable if you've previously completed the god the god Hagar. So apparently the egg and the raid quest, like you couldn't get the next part of this chain where you go into lower Black Rock Spire, so that's good. Um in Nightmare Incursions, Gumaraja will no longer uh have infinite range on certain attacks <laughs> it will now leash and no longer has infinite range so that's good i guess um i never really encountered a problem with him hunter explosive shot will no longer ignore line of sight this is good fix an issue with lethal shots that made it stop working after death until the hunter re-equips their ranged weapons um i'm not really sure where that came into play but very very odd uh, presence of mind will no longer be removed from the mage without successfully casting chronostatic preservation. That's huge. I found that to be very obnoxious when I did my limited mage healing. When the carnage rune is engraved, Crimson Tempest will now correctly apply carnage to all enemies struck by the dot. That's a great thing for rogues. Um, Shaman clear casting will now correctly be consumed if you have five stacks of maelstrom weapon and you cast a non maelstrom weapon empowered spell. Totem of Earth and Vitality will no longer activate the Shaman, will activate when the Shaman is merely struck. Overcharge will no longer ignore a line of sight. Uh, Master Channeler's Life Chain will no longer prematurely end versus large enemies like Lord Kazakh. Um, Mark of Chaos will no longer fail to refresh if the target has Curse of Elements or Curse of Shadows active on them. Curse of Elements and Curse of Shadows will now return a more powerful version of the spell is already active. Warriors, bosses, and dungeons will now always be immune to Meat Hook as intended. So I guess uh, Warriors had a little fun with Meat Hook and we're pulling a bunch of bosses. So anyway, guys, that is a ton of changes. Some of them have been in for a little bit. Others have not. But that is the full list of changes that Blizzard has given us. Like I said, I think all these are just good quality of life things. I don't really disagree with any of them. A few of them we covered in videos, as I mentioned before. But all in all, I think they're hearing us. They're seeing what's wrong, what people are struggling with, and they're making a little tweaks to it. Especially the biggest one is the point five quest line. Um, that was released in AQ as sort of a catch-up mechanic for people to get their gear. And with it being like the mainstream thing to go to some of those values just needed tweaked and it took them almost a week but they definitely got it tweaked and hopefully i'll be doing it on my druid here again so hopefully i will see how much things are different and can definitely keep track of that and tell you guys my experience so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what you think if you disagree with any of the changes be sure to tell me why i always like reading those comments and the feedback you give but until next time i'll see you later hope you have a great day Bye bye if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching. It truly means a lot to me. If you happen to find anyone that you know would also benefit from watching this video, please, please, please share it with them. It helps me out a ton and allows me to keep doing what I love every single day. And that is gaming and sort of helping people any way that I can. So finally, thank you so much, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Goodbye.